Okay, the purpose of this video is going to be to deal with economic growth uh, as it relates to AP macroeconomics. Now, a couple things about economic growth um, before we get going. Um, some of the causes of economic growth in a society tend to be a uh, change in technology, usually that being an increase in technology as you have more equipment, more plants, um, you can do things more efficiently. If you just think about uh, your life today, as opposed to the life of someone 50 years ago, computers are able to do things much faster, much quicker. That means that per person we are more productive, therefore there's been significant economic growth. Um, you can talk about a change in natural resources. Um, if you found a cheap energy source below the ground of your country, it would probably lead to economic growth. Uh, the natural resource if resources, if you look at countries as a whole, tends to play, I think, a little less of an impact than most people think. If you look at Japan, it does not have a lot of natural resources, yet it's got a very advanced economy. Many of the countries in Africa do have uh, good natural resources, and it does not always lead to um, successful economies there. Um, the next could be a change in human capital, Okay, as you get better quality workers, um, more productive workers, you start graduating more engineers and more scientists. Um, on average, they tend to be more productive than people that don't have advanced degrees and those high level of skills. If you look around the world, successful economies tend to have strong human capital. Um, could be a change in the number of workers. If you think about immigration in the United States, um, during the 18 and 1900s, there was a steady supply of cheap available labor that was coming in from the rest of the, of the world. And then you can also talk about, um, usually it's like government structures, and it's really like a, a law code. And all advanced economies have a law code. And the reason why is I always use like the PayPal example. You know, you have an online service that you're willing to put your credit card in and supposedly a company is going to ship the goods right to your home. Well, if there wasn't an advanced law code, that probably wouldn't be able to happen because you'd have no confidence that if the product didn't show up, you would have the ability to do something about it and get your money back. So all of the law code, if you think of even through history, like ancient Rome, for example, their trade and a lot of their economic success was based on the fact that they adopted a strict law code that ensured that um, consumers and producers were kind of protected. They understand the rules. There's contracts. And that's really kind of the role of a government to supply those things. Kind of going back to Africa, if you look in Africa, that is a big hindrance to their economic growth, the fact that there's kind of... Um, the law code structure hasn't really been put in place yet as it has, let's say, in the United States. Now, when we talk about economic growth graphically, we're really talking about mainly two graphs. This is your production possibilities graph. Remember, you have to label it with something. If they don't tell you what it is, capital and consumer goods are good. Um, and the other graph that also would represent it really is the long-run aggregate supply graph. And we'll leave the short-run and long-run uh, or the short run aggregate supply and the aggregate demand graph off that for now. And so economic growth graphically is the whole curve shifting out to the right. So that means you can produce more capital and more consumer goods. And on this graph, it would be the long run aggregate supply curve shifting to the right. That kind of signifies economic growth. You want to think of the production possibilities curve over here, the PPC, and the long run aggregate supply curve. Uh, it's almost the same or synonymous in this class. If one goes, the other one goes. And in fact, many times on the AP exam, if they want you to represent economic growth, they could interchangeably just say, show what would happen to a production possibilities curve or show what happens to the long run aggregate supply curve over the course of time. So they could use either one and the whole question, A, B, C, D, and E could be exactly the same. And then they could randomly decide which one they want you to do for F and it would have the exact same impact. Okay, so now back to growth. Um, what can cause economic growth or what they tend to focus on are the things that we can control. You can't necessarily control, you know, natural resources. Um, you can't necessarily force people to invent new technologies on demand, let's say. Like you can't tell someone to invent the new internet or invent cold fusion or something like that that would help cause economic growth. But you can create environments in countries. Um, and I'm going to put the two interest rate graphs up here kind of one on top of the other, in which investment is conducive and that will lead to economic growth. So this is the 
money market up top and it's got a nominal interest rate okay so this is money market nominal interest rate once again quantity of money and this is the loanable funds quantity of loanable funds goes down here and if you remember this is just a straight supply and demand graph now anytime you draw these two graphs I've asked you to put the investment demand curve right next to it you're going to use the same interest rate here same interest rate here and the investment demand curve remember just goes down and to the right quantity of investment quantity of investment okay um, so what they might have you do for this graph let's say use a different color um, let's say the Fed buys bonds which increases reserves increases the money supply and shifts things to the right hold on one sec okay I believe I was saying cause if they buy bonds it causes the money supply so it causes the money to supply to increase and so there you can see what that impact on investment is going to be okay there's going to be greater investment you can kind of see that there there's more investment in this society in the loanable funds market let's say they talked about um, Americans increasing their savings or there's more savings in general because remember the supply of loanable funds you want to equate to savings so that would cause this to happen supply goes to the right and you can see what happens to this interest rate here the interest rate declining causes more investment so both scenarios we have the interest rate going down and we have more investment okay so now why do we care about more investment well here's where we tie it in to the aggregate demand aggregate supply graph okay so remember in both scenarios we had a change in investment and the change was an increase in investment okay so now if we go here Here's our long run aggregate supply. And they told you an economy started at, let's say, full employment. So short run aggregate supply, aggregate demand. You can tell this economy is at full employment because all three lines are intersecting um, the same spot. And real GDP down here. Now remember, investment, as you see over here, is a part of aggregate demand. So if investment is increased, you should know automatically the very first thing that's going to happen is aggregate demand is going to go to the right. You can see that here. Now, as aggregate demand goes to the right, think about what's happening. Companies are starting to invest because investment got cheaper. Um, and what does that mean? It means they're buying engineers, they're buying scientists, they're buying plants, they're buying equipment, they're buying land, um, they're hiring people to build buildings and demanding raw materials so that causes aggregate demand to go to the right and in the short run so you can see this little rightward shift is going to cause this economy to start experiencing some inflationary pressures if they started at full employment however as time goes on so this is like the first step this is I guess we'll say a the first thing that happens is aggregate demand is going to increase because of this change okay then as time goes on some of these investments are going to start to pay off and what does that mean it means they might develop new technologies and more efficient ways to do things and the internet might be created or they might have ran fiber optic cable which allows them to communicate better around the world um, new transistors uh, all sorts of new technologies happen you know the iPads invented video conferencing all these different things which is then going to lead to a shift in the short run aggregate supply curve is going to shift this way because these new technologies are going to pay off are all of the investments going to pay off of course not but some of them are going to pay off okay and so if you're going to go from here and then you're going to be here and if you look what happens that inflationary pressure is lessened as the new investments come online but now your equilibrium is over here and so that's going to cause the long run aggregate supply curve to shift to the right and that right there is your economic growth okay now at full employment you are able to produce more goods and more services in theory what's happening when you have economic growth is real GDP is increasing but really even more important than that real GDP per capita or per person is increasing and that's really the best indicator of economic growth um, you can have smaller countries that have less GDP than larger countries but if they have a higher real GDP per capita it means 
that country, the individual citizens are probably better off than the countries in which they don't have uh, such a high real GDP per capita. Last thing, because we shifted the long-run aggregate supply curve, if they wanted to know what would have happened on the production possibilities curve, you have capital, you have consumer here, or whatever they're asking you, that would shift this curve out and to the right, and that's how you would show economic growth there. Okay? Uh, hopefully this gives you a good start on economic growth. If you have any other questions about it, you can ask me in class.